Thank you for watching. Uh, if you're wondering what you're seeing over here in the foreground, that is the drag chain of my X carve. If you wonder what the hell an X carve is, go check out my previous video. It explains a whole lot. Uh, the X carve is a CNC tabletop uh, router made by the company Inventables, and they've sent me one to try out. I'm not just making wooden parts on it because a lot of people uh, misunderstood what I, what I explained in a previous video in which I showed how I carved a piece of wood that was just a calibrated machine. I will be machining and I have already machined uh, RC parts on this uh, X-Carve. Uh, I ordered some Delrin as well. I ordered some uh, carbon fiber on the website inventables.com. Link in the description box. You can find a ton of materials that you can apply to your uh, RCs. Delrin is a super strong uh, plastic. Uh, carbon fiber needs no explanation. I think it is rigid, it is tough, uh, it looks super cool and you can machine it. Uh, also aluminium can be machined on the X-Carve but I'm not doing that uh, with this project. This project is Delrin, it's carbon fiber. I'm going to take the top off, I'm going to show you what I made so far and I hope you will enjoy it. Now as for how I bolted together the cage and how I hacked that up, all that stuff, uh, go check out the, the playlist that this video is in. Uh, all that stuff is explained in the previous video. Also how I hacked up the chassis. Previous video this car was still uh, sitting on a stand. Uh, I managed to take it off the stand right now because everything is bolted together. I will eventually, uh, in the end of this video, I will take out uh, the motors and transmissions just to show you how everything looks on the inside. But for now I just want you to understand that everything is structurally very sound and uh, that everything is put together so far and that it functions because that's most important. When bolting two cars together and making a split like that, making sure that it does not come apart is one of the most uh, crucial things. So what you see over here is uh, two Axial Yeti XLs, they're split. One of them is hacked up in the back, one of them is hacked up in the front. I managed to put those two together and what I did uh, to, to manage to be able to, to actually fuse them is I machined a, a sheet of Delrin for the bottom. I will take this part off right here because this is still a loose item. You will go to a close up by the way so you have a good understanding of uh, what I did. So I made a sheet of Delrin that uh, goes over the bottom of the car. Uh, connecting those two halves together and I also made two carbon fiber uprights that I bolted down alongside uh, each battery tray making sure that I got a lot of vertical stability going on in this setup as well. There's still a few parts that I need to machine but I think for now it's most important to show you what kind of quality parts you get uh, when you machine them with the X-Carve and also I will take you over a few of the steps that I took. Uh, again, I'm not experienced with these machines at all. Uh, I do not want to damage the machine in the process either. Uh, you do get a huge waste board. You will see uh, like a clip of the waste board as well just so you have an idea what I'm talking about. Uh, I did not want to damage the waste board either. So I have machined all of my stuff on a separate uh, under layer, to put it like that. So whether that would be a sheet of wood, a pizza box, stuff like that, um, just to protect the, the working surface of the X-Carve. Um, pizza boxes. You know, I, I love pizza, I'm not, I'm not sure about you guys. Otherwise you can just go to your local pizza store, I'm pretty sure that they have a few pizza boxes for you. Pizza boxes for me have been crucial uh, to machine this parts. I'm still bad at muting my stuff. What I did is I machined all of my parts prior to making them from the actual material. Delrin is expensive. Uh, carbon fiber is also really expensive. Here you see the sheet that I uh, machined my parts from. Um, prior to machining it from the actual material I machined everything from pizza boxes. Works like a charm just to uh, make sure that you can test fit everything. You can tweak uh, your drawings a tiny bit so if nothing lines up or if you just have a few things that you need to alter you can, uh, you can instantly do that. Uh, with the program easel that uh, Inventables has available on the website and then you sort of uh, evolve from uh, a template that looks like this to something that looks like this to something that looks like this until you eventually machine the actual part that you want to have. Just to check, check and double check. It's also my lack of experience that uh, um, 
I don't know, made me kind of uh, unsure and I just want to double check everything before I actually go ahead, press a button and potentially ruin a perfectly fine piece of material, which I do not uh, want to do. So uh, that goes for both sides. The size that you see over here, this is basically the evolution of the, the left upright over here. I started out with a square bit, seeing if I needed to machine out some slots as well for the transmission cover. I did not need to do that. Uh, then I went to something that was a tiny bit more lightweight. And then I had a look to see if I could actually machine a logo in there as well without it interfering uh, with the battery tray. Um, tweaked it a tiny bit, altered it a tiny bit and uh, well, made the actual carbon part. So that is uh, these three pieces over here. Uh, these pieces are for uh, the right upright. Uh, same story, started with something square, uh, made it a bit more lightweight. Everything from pizza boxes. The cardboard of a pizza box is pretty much uh, sturdy pizzas weigh a ton. Uh, so this will give you a really good idea of where you're at and uh, if you need to alter stuff. So that's those two. And then over here, this is the bottom plate. And that's also the part that I started out with. So this started out like this. Let me see if I can fit it on. Just to give you an idea of a test fit and also to give me an idea of uh, where I wanted to cut the holes. Now what I did, because I can totally imagine that you do not like the design that I put on here. Uh, I made separate files. I also machined, uh, I lightened this part a tiny bit. The bottom of the Yeti XL has a bit of an outward line going on. So it bulges out. So I machined my part uh, on the top. If that makes any sense, I machined it on the top. I cut out approximately two and a half millimeters just to make it lighter and to make sure that it slots around the original chassis a whole lot better. So that is one drawing. Then I flipped the part around, uh, made a separate drawing in which I uh, machined out a fingerprint. I'm not sure if you can see that. This is a highly uh, blown up fingerprint. And I don't know, I just wanted to make it a tiny bit more personal. Nothing is more personal than uh, a fingerprint. This is my fingerprint, uh, but you can download it from an easel if you want to. I can totally picture that you do not want to have it. Some people say, yeah, it's impractical, you know, because there will be a whole lot of mud and muck getting stuck in that fingerprint, which is true. So if you do not want to have it, you do not need to use that drawing and you can just move on to the next one. For me, the next drawing were uh, all the logos. I machined them diagonally just to make sure that the, the actual uh, uh, split, which is of course uh, a 90 degree split, that that one is as strong as possible because I do not want to have any problems with the car falling apart when I eventually run it. Uh, these logos as well, you can just leave them out if you do not like them. And then I machined the entire outline of the chassis plate. That's also a separate file. So in theory, you can just use the outline, carve your part and uh, be done. Then I made a separate file with all the holes and I also made a separate file in which I countersunk all of the holes. Figuring out where these holes needed to be was, I think, the most work. You have on the inside, you will go to a close-up. On the inside of the chassis, there's a whole lot of webbing going on. I wanted to make sure that I missed all the webbing and also there where possible that I managed to slot in uh, a nut so I do not have to hold that one down when I tighten it up. Plus, I needed to machine these uh, holes for the transmission cases. Uh, four holes in the front, four holes in the back. Just to make sure that after uh, bolting down that sheet of Delrin, connecting those two chassis together, that I still have access to those transmission cases. Otherwise, it's also impossible to put it together because you kind of get stuck. I hope that makes sense. Uh, what happens then is you bolt down the chassis plate, you do not have access to these uh, screw holes and you're stuck with a transmission case that you cannot plant down. Uh, the other way around doesn't work either because there you bolt in those two transmission cases with uh, the motors. Motors in my case are the Castle Creations Mambo Monster 2 uh, setups, two of them. The ESC will sit in the back over here and uh, in the stock place uh, in the front over here. But uh, what happens otherwise is you bolt down your motors, your transmissions, and you do not have any access to the webbing on the chassis. So you will not be able to bolt down your Delrin. So 
the only way to do it is to do it like this. This drawing is available. You can just uh, grab it, machine it, and be done with it. You can save a whole lot of time. For me, this has been a couple of weeks drawing stuff up, figuring out how it works best. I tried to simplify everything as, uh, as good as I could. Um, and I hope that I managed to do that so uh, you won't be intimidated to take on a project like this. I'm having a blast building this thing. In the next video you will see me machining this part. I will take you over the entire process of uh, drawing it up, showing you what it looks like in easel, also uh, showing you how I carve it from a pizza box, how I test fit it and how eventually I machine it from uh, some carbon fiber. You will also be uh, seeing, right now you will be seeing some close-ups of the motors being uh, taken out, uh, what everything looks like on the inside so you have a really good understanding of what this uh, what this looks like, how it is bolted down, how mechanically sound it is and you do not have to be afraid that this car will fall apart ever because that just won't happen. I also machined uh, some tops for the battery trays, only got uh, one laying over here currently so these will be bolted to the top of the battery tray with some uh, super low profile uh, nuts on the inside just to make sure that I have a tiny extra bit of sturdiness just to make sure that I never have to worry about any breakages on this car because I plan to run it a whole lot. Well, I guess that uh, sort of wraps it up for this update. Um, more information about uh, the Axial Yeti XL uh, in the description box on the Axial Racing uh, website. Uh, more info about the Castle Creations Mamba Monster 2 setups also in the description box. More info about the batteries that I will be running also in the description box. I run uh, Dynagy batteries and uh, I will be also using four of them in uh, this build. And of course a lot more information on the inventables.com website. That's the company who have uh, provided me with uh, the X-Carve. Uh, a tool that is crucial in getting this build done. And a tool that allows me to do such a lot of custom work that I can't even begin to explain how enthusiastic I am. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to uh, hit that like button. Uh, more info about me if you want to be ahead of what I'm doing over here. Uh, check out my uh, links in the description box, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.